Hey guys, Sebi's Random Tech back with another video. Today we're going to be looking at the Lenovo ThinkPad T430 right here. And we're going to be upgrading the processor in it. Right now it has the standard dual core i5-3320M, I think, with hyper-threading, which is a decent processor and it's enough to get work done. And it's enough to edit 1080p 60 frame per second video. Uh, but we, we want to max this thing out. We're going to make it as fast as we can. So I'm going to be upgrading it to the Core i7-3612QM, which is one of the fastest quad-core i7 processors that you can get for this thing without going overboard on the TDP. Now, there are faster um, quad-core i7s that will fit into the socket on this motherboard. Uh, however, they have a TDP of 45 watts, while the cooling system for this ThinkPad is only rated for 35 watts. So I'm keeping things a little bit safe here. In addition, I actually got the heatsink for a T430 that was configured with a dedicated GPU, even though this ThinkPad does not have a dedicated GPU. And I've been reading on some of the forums about how this helps keep the system a little bit cooler uh, whenever it's doing heavy tasks. Now, this video is more specifically talking about the ThinkPad T430. However, this process will be similar on the T410 and T420. However, you do have to note that the processors from the T410 will not work in the T430, vice versa. Now, I actually have read on some of the forums online, uh, there's been some success with getting Ivy Bridge or T430 generation processors working in a T420. You have to do like a BIOS mod and there's some other things you have to do and then Ivy Bridge processors will work. But I haven't tried this and I don't really plan on it. Um, so we're going to be sticking to the T430. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, Windows updates are the absolute worst. Alright, so when you're taking apart the ThinkPad T430, there's a couple things you're going to want to do. Obviously, make sure the power is turned off, the laptop's unplugged, and the battery has been removed. You don't want to be changing out the processor when the computer's still on. That would not be good. The first thing we're going to do is take these two screws off the bottom that hold the RAM door in place. So you just take those out, RAM door comes off, and then there will be two more screws underneath to remove the keyboard. So you unscrew those two screws, and then you're going to open up the laptop, and you're going to push the keyboard forward and then pull it up, and it will come out. Now, normally you would take the keyboard and push it up, and then it would come out, but since this is the T420 keyboard, it has to be kind of forced into place. So there's some snaps along the bottom here. You're just going to get those out, and then unplug the ribbon cable here from the for the touchpad and fingerprint reader, and then remove the other ribbon cable for the keyboard, and then this should all come right out. There we go. So now we get to the good stuff. So the next thing we have to do is remove this left speaker. It's just held in by one screw, and then after that it should just come out of place. If you're not replacing the heatsink, now would be a good time to give it the compressed air treatment. Alright, so here is your CPU right here, and then this is your heatsink and your fan assembly. So you notice that the heatsink, where the screws are, they are numbered 1, 2, 3, and 4. So when you're unscrewing this, you want to remove them in reverse order, starting with 4, then 3, 2, and then 1. And when you put the new processor in, you're going to put that back on. So, so now you can just kind of lift up, in theory. Yep. And now to get these cables out of the way. But now the heatsink will just come right out. So there's the old heatsink, and there's the processor. Okay, so now that you want to get the processor out, you're just going to get a flat tip screwdriver. And you can see this lock unlock position here. So you're going to move this to the unlock position, and then you should just be able to pull the processor right out like that. If you're planning on reusing this, it's good not to bend the pins or drop it like I just did. You can see all that old thermal paste on there, and then there is our socket. So, 
Up next, we have to get the new processor. They didn't pack this very well. I'm kind of glad it came in one piece. Okay, so here is the new processor. What you want to do is line the little arrow here in the corner up with the corresponding arrow here on the socket. You can see there is one corner on the socket where there isn't a pin. You can see the other four, three corners have a pin. But right there, there is no pin. So that's where the triangle goes. And you're just going to pop it down into place like that. Take your screwdriver, flip it to the lock position, and you are good to go. But this has old thermal paste on it, so we're going to have to get rid of that. So that's where our good friend rubbing alcohol comes in. This is 91% rubbing alcohol. Some people will say to get higher percentage. I found that this is adequate. Okay, so my method is pretty simple. You just get your alcohol, you get a towel, dump a little bit on, and then go to town on the processor and get all of the paste off. This, <laughs> the paste is like completely dry, so it's a good thing we're removing it. It's completely dry, that's hilarious. Up, oh, and it just fell into the computer. Alright, so here's our new uh, heat sink. As you can see, it has the extra fin here for the dedicated GPU that is not present on this model. Uh, so, so it's not going to be touching anything. But this will help keep the processor a little bit cooler. And then there's also some old thermal grease on here that we're going to have to get off. Just get our rubbing alcohol. Get that off. Look at that. Now, this should be common sense, but before you put this on the processor, you need to put new thermal paste on the processor. This is a step that some people miss, and then their processor overheats and blows up and stuff like that. So don't do that. So we're going to get some thermal paste. Alright, so we are back with my weapon of choice, Arctic MX4 Thermal Compound. You can get this on Amazon for like, not even 10 bucks. You get a pretty decent amount in here. So, this is what I use. It's used on every laptop where I've or any computer where I've had to put new thermal paste on. And it works great. So, what you do, it's pretty simple. Oh. You just put the thermal compound onto the die here, the shiny part of the processor. Just push a little bit on. That might actually be a little bit too much, but whatever. So, some people like to spread it around, like with a credit card or with, I don't know, something. But you don't really need to do that because when you put the processor in place, or when you, the processor, when you put the heat sink in place, it'll actually spread out the compound for you. Okay, so we have the heat sink in place. So now, I'm just going to push down lightly onto here. I think that's on there pretty securely. Now, make sure you reconnect the fan, because it'd be bad if we didn't do that. Alright, so we have the keyboard and palm rest back into place. I didn't screw them down yet, but I secured them in place, so we're not going to move around. One thing I should have done before doing this was make sure the thing works, make sure we didn't blow anything up. So, it is time to do the smoke test. So, I'm going to plug this in. Smoke test! Hey, we have the ThinkPad logo. Sweet. Now we're just going to go into the BIOS here. Okay, Core i7-3612QM. You can see it right here in the BIOS. Sweet. Okay, so this is working. So we're just going to shut the computer off now until we fully reassemble it. I think I forgot to mention when I was taking this thing apart, there is another little tiny screw that goes in underneath the battery. Alright guys, so now that we're finished with the upgrades, what do I think? Well, we definitely have an improvement in the speed of the computer with rendering videos and all of that. So it's definitely a good upgrade for those of you who want to get a little more speed out of your ThinkPad. Now, the stock processor, this, this Core i5, it's perfectly fine for most everyday tasks, 
But for those of you who want to get a little bit more out of your ThinkPad, there's always an upgrade available. So, I think it's worth it. Um, if you don't mind paying, I think these are going for around $80, $90. I think I paid $90 for mine. Uh, if you can get an i7 uh, 3612QM or a similar processor, it's definitely a great upgrade for these ThinkPads. It definitely improved the rendering speeds, and overall the system feels a little bit snappier. Uh, the only thing is, um, like I expected, it didn't really improve the graphics performance of the computer, but you could hook up an external GPU to this thing anyway, so it's not like you really need to upgrade the processor to get that benefit. That's all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.